Welcome back everyone. This is the 27th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Um, our focus has been the move class and building out all of the different concrete move types that can be executed on a chess board. And <clears throat> we're taking sort of a slight diversion into generating castle moves. Okay, so we want to execute the castle moves, but castle moves are a special type of move that we never fleshed out in any of the pieces in the calculate legal moves method. And so what I did was I introduced a new abstract method called calculate king castles. And in the last video, we implemented this method for the white player. And the good news is that implementing this for the black player is going to look very similar. It's just going to be that these uh, tiles that here that I've hard coded in here are going to be different. Otherwise, the structure of the code is going to be exactly the same. Um, there's also some <clears throat> minor errors I made, I think, in the last video that I need to clean up. For example, in the piece class, so let's start there. Let's jump, jump right into it. In the piece class, in piece type, I introduced a method called is rook. And um, I sort of got a little carried away, and I marked, correctly, I marked is rook to return true for the rook piece enum, but then I kept, <laughs> I just kept going with it and marked that true for all the uh, uh, the queen and the king. Um, so that's false for the queen and it's false for the king, right? So let's just double check this. Uh, looks right, looks right, okay. So, right, so now why don't we go over here to, well, let's go to the white player. Let's copy all of this. This should be nice and straightforward and come here. And let's go ahead and implement the method. And we can literally paste. Okay, so now we just have to um, get these tiles corrected. So. Um, let's do the black, black's king side castle first. So if we were to look at black's king side castle, the squares, uh, I believe, in between would be five and six, and the rook tile would be square seven, and the attacks would be again on five and six, right? And then otherwise we would, I think that's correct. Otherwise we want to um, add it here and we haven't done that yet. Um, and on the queen side castle, um, it's going to be tiles, tile ID one, Um, two and three that need to be not occupied and tile ID zero for the rook tile and then we can just go ahead and do the add right so Basically, really what we've done here is the same rules that we applied to white, we're applying here to the black king, right? Um, <clears throat> remember the tile IDs start here at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can go and look and see what I did here. Let's see if I can squeeze this in. So on the, for the kings, let's just quickly go over the king side castle, what I said was that make sure that tiles 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are not occupied, right? Then go ahead and get the rook that should be here on tile 7. Make sure that it's occupied and that it's its first move. Um, and then make sure that there are no attacks um, on the intermediate tiles. That's what we said were part of the rules here. Um, to, for in, in the requirements, if you will. So now we've done that for white, and we've also done that for black. Um, 
So yeah, that's great. And we don't have any compile errors anymore. So <clears throat> at this point, uh, I think we can go back to the move class. And we have introduced a castle move. And notice we have a king side castle and a queen side castle. Um, but we don't have any sort of implementation uh, developed. And uh, so we want to we want to think about what that's going to mean. So common to the castle moves. Let's introduce the member fields in the castle moves. So you're going to have a protected final rook castle rook. Right? That's the rook that's going to be involved in the castle. Protected final int castle rook start position protected and we might be able to refactor this and simplify it but let's just go through this right now final int castle rook destination right okay and let's say this dot castle rook is equal to castle rook we're going to pass this in oops And this dot castle rook start is equal to castle rook start. We're going to pass that in. And this dot castle rook destination is equal to castle rook destination. Let's go ahead and introduce each of these here. Final int castle rook. Oops. Final rook. Castle rook. Final int castle rook start. And final int castle rook and destination. Okay. So that's that. And we'll have a getter method on here. Public rook get castle rook. Return this dot castle rook, and we will say public boolean is castling move return true, and this should be a method that's defined on move at override, and uh, so we should be able to see that up here. Yep, we do. Um, and at override <clears throat> public board execute right and the <clears throat> the only reason why I subclass the king side castle and the queen side castle out is to override the two string method but the implementation for the execute method is the same and I'll go ahead and um, do that here and See how long that takes, and if time permits, we'll keep going. If not, we'll stop, and we'll pick it up in the next video. So, as usual, we want to say builder is equal to new builder for final piece piece in this dot board dot get all pieces. Did I not get all moves? I don't have a get all pieces. Um, actually, this should not be all pieces. This should just be current players pieces. Uh, we could do it like that. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and introduce. That would probably be more convenient. Uh, Let's just do it the way we've been doing it all along. Let's copy this. Let's copy this. So if the moved piece, if it's if the, the piece that we're setting on the new board is not the moved piece and it's not the um, castle rook. Let me 
then set the piece. And go ahead and set the enemy's pieces. And after you're done doing that, we want to say builder.set piece, this.move piece, and this this piece that we're moving is going to be the king. Um, move piece this and builder dot set piece and we're also going to set a new rook right so a new rook and that rook is going to have the position of this dot castle rook dot get alliance dot castle rook destination false because it's moved it looks like it's complaining about something we'll fix that in a second um, builder dot set move maker to this dot board dot current players opponent after we've made the move alliance and return builder dot build. So all we've done here is that we've moved the king to its destination location, and we've moved um, the rook with these two. So we moved the piece via the move piece method, the king via the move piece method, and we've manually cr created a new rook that's sitting on the um, you know the castle side for the for the. For the rook, it's it's basically two, two, two trend, two moves, two pieces being moved within the same execute method, if you will. Everything else is placed as is, and so this is complaining that rook in rook cannot be applied to the arguments. So I didn't get one of the arguments right, which I, uh, so it wants the piece alliance and the piece position. Um, Did I not have a first move for that? Well, let's just get rid of this and we'll come back to it. I'll have a to-do look into the first normal pieces. Okay, so that should be right for the most part. Um, we have this complaint, and this is complaining because, right, we haven't set these other arguments. So we need to pass in these three arguments to there and there. Oops. Right. So I think we've done that. And for the most part, that's it. The um, hash code and equals method, well, the equals method will be different for the subclasses and the two string method. So you can imagine. Let's just do the two-string method so you can you get a sense of what it'll look like. So the override on the um, public string, two-string, this is just nice and convenient. Return, right. this is sort of the convention for, the PGN convention for printing out a kingside castle, and this is the PGN convention for a queenside castle. <clears throat> That's why we subclass this like this. Otherwise, we could have just, uh, you know, only had this class, the castle move class. So I think that's it for the most part. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's right. I haven't really, 
in the piece class, I haven't really, I've introduced the is first move method, but I haven't really done anything with it, and that's why. So we'll have to come back to that and fix it. But and I think you guys get a sense of what we've done here so far. Um, castling, for the most part, is done. Uh, we still have a little bit of work left to do in fleshing out this class. Um, and once we do that, once we get that done, then we can uh, focus on the GUI. And the GUI should be short. There's really only, if you've gone ahead and looked at the my GitHub account where all of the sort of finished source code exists, um, you can browse through it and see that there's not that many GUI classes. But it, uh, the, you know, the, the finished product GUI looks decent. Um, so we, we can jump into that and then do some AI and maybe some database stuff um, and also jump back into uh, the unit tests and also code coverage. So hopefully this is working out well and everybody's enjoying these videos. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe and looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.